My mom and I were summoned to uh, a part of the university clinic in Heidelberg, in Schlierheim. There I was examined, and during the examination, my mom was sitting on the outside of the room, and she overheard the conversation that the doctors would uh, do away with me, uh, would upspritz up me, which means that it would give me a needle and put me asleep. This clip of Robert Wageman sharing his first encounter with the euthanasia program is just a glimpse into the horrid plans the Nazis had to murder anyone they felt was inferior due to a minor mental or physical disability. Wageman had a minuscule hip dislocation due to complications in his birth. He and his mother escaped the medical center that he was almost put to death in and hid out in his grandparents' farm until the war ended. Wageman then got married, had children, moved to the United States, and continued to live there for the rest of his life. He is one of the hundreds of thousands of lives affected by the euthanasia program, which killed 200,000 people by 1945. By definition, euthanasia is mercy killing, or the act of putting someone to death painlessly, typically because of their incurable disease. The Nazis believed that if anyone had even an extremely minor disability, they didn't deserve to live. In spring of 1939, a group of planners started to organize a secret killing operation against disabled children. In October of 1939, authorities recommended that disabled children be brought to one of the numerous pediatric clinics throughout Germany for special care. The children sent there were starved or accidentally given overdoses of medicine until they died. The planners of this had confidential support from Adolf Hitler, and they also had secret offices scattered around Germany. The largest office was in Berlin, and its street address was Tiergartenstrasse 4. Therefore, the group of planners called themselves the T4s. The T4s established six gassing centers for people of all ages. They recruited anyone with schizophrenia, epilepsy, dementia, encephalitis, irregular skeleton structure, and other diseases. The T4 put them in rooms where the victims thought they were going to bathe, but they were sprayed with carbon monoxide gas and then cremated. When outside sources began to learn about the murdering, Hitler ordered the T4 to stop. However, they did not, and he never openly spoke about it again. Many parents began to wonder where their child was. And in response to this, the T4 lied to the parents and said that their child had died of pneumonia and the bodies were cremated to stop the spread of the disease. Not too long after this, the T4 expanded the euthanasia program to Austria, Moravia, and Poland. They convinced citizens and physicians that disabled people were not worthy enough to live. The SS police primarily ruled these areas, so the T4 and the SS teamed up to kill foreign disabled people. They promoted spontaneous slaughters of all disabled people, Jews, gays, Romas, and Jehovah's Witnesses. Together they overthrew hospitals and used them as more killing centers. Transportation vans from camps to camps would often be gassed by surprise. These formidable methods of killing were used as models for future work and death camps such as Auschwitz. The euthanasia program continued until the end of World War II in 1945. Overall, the euthanasia plans, or mercy killings, are an aspect of the Holocaust that too many people overlook. The Nazis inhumanely claimed over 200,000 lives but they will never be forgotten.